Hi, everybody. Welcome to Mark's Backyard Birds. Uh, this topic tonight is about purple martins. And what, you know, I, there are a lot of resources out there available for you to learn about purple martins. And I get asked, especially this time of year in the spring, uh, it, it is February now, but martins are on their way. They're already across much of the the, the southern United States. And these are the scouts, those older adult birds that are, are coming in and uh, looking for nesting sites. And, and they probably nested, if you hadn't last year, they're returning to your boxes and claiming the best uh, nesting sites there are. But there are a lot of misinformation out there. And I I talk more people out of buying purple martin houses quite often than I do talking them into it because people come in and they have huge misconceptions about this wonderful bird. Martins, let me get a picture of them up here. Uh, this is a, an adult male purple martin, and they are a large swallow. So they are, you know, are probably our largest member of our swallow group here in, in North America. And they are uh, colony nesters. And, and they, that's one of the reasons that make them so popular. Um, the one of the, the, the first myth that I want to debunk because this dissuades a lot of people when they come in and ask me about purple martins is they've always heard that they eat tons of mosquitoes. Uh, this is not true. Uh, ideal in biological facts. And there, every study that has ever been done shows that uh, mosquitoes make up a very small, minuscule part of a purple martin's diet. Uh, stomach samples and just, just the nature of when and where they feed, uh, the two don't intersect very often. So, um, but unscrupulous owner or builders of martin houses way back when, you know, used to tag all kinds of things to, to sell them. Oh, 5,000 mosquitoes a day and, and this kind of thing, which has never been proven. And here, here's a couple of facts to help support me uh, in this. And that is uh, Martins are active during the daytime. They feed during the daytime. When are mosquitoes most active? At night. So time of day, they don't uh, overlap. Well, okay, you say, well, dawn and dusk. In the morning when there's still mosquitoes out or in the evening when the mosquitoes out. Well, purple martins tend to hunt about 15 feet in the air and higher, whereas mosquitoes live their entire lives from about six feet above the ground and lower. So even when they're hunting, the mosquitoes don't. Do, I guess every once in a while they will intersect and they'll eat a mosquito here and there. But stomach sample scientific studies have shown that the number one food of purple martins are flies. And the old, <clears throat> excuse me, the old uh, tale of Native Americans put up gourds to attract martins to eat their mosquitoes was half true. Uh, Native Americans did grow and could put, carve and put out gourds to attract nesting purple martins, especially in the eastern two-thirds of the country. Uh, and they did that. They put those gourds around their meat stores so that the martins would eat the flies, which that coincides with what science says, that, they, that that is their number one food. And I'll take it one step further on the mosquito uh, story and that one of the other favorite foods of a purple martin is a dragonfly and dragonflies are major consumers of mosquitoes so not only do they not eat mosquitoes they actually eat one of the major predators on mosquitoes so when people come in and they and it would be much easier for us to say oh yeah they eat five thousand mosquitoes a day go ahead and put that house up and buy it from me spend your money and put it up and and then not be happy but uh you know i don't do that i cannot and i will not uh, give give out poor scientific facts so uh they don't eat the mosquitoes but they're very beneficial people who have cattle and horses and the last Stock, they, where, where flies are predominant because of all the droppings, they love purple martins because they eat large amounts of flies. They eat other insects too, flying insects. But uh, no, the mosquito, I wanted to get that one out of the way right off the bat. Uh, the other reason I talk people out of purple martin houses is because really uh, nothing, you don't, 
you can't have any trees or things, structures as tall as the house within about 40 feet all the way around. So this is a Martin, house, the Martin Gourd set that we installed several years ago. And this open area is perfect for Martins. And of course, they love the power lines to perch on. And they, they own the, of course, they'll do it on the poles and stuff too. But most people have too many trees in their yard. So when they come in and I and ask about the Martin houses and we talk about their yard and that they've got trees, I, I, I talk them out of it. I had, I've had customers come in a year later and go, you know, you don't know if you remember me, but you know, you did the strangest thing uh, about a year ago. You talked me out of buying a $400 Purple Martin and pole set up. And he said, I, when I left here, I thought, well, that guy's kind of interesting. But then I thought, you know what? He was honest with me and he came and came back and he bought a whole bird feeder pole set up and everything. So I feel like, you know, give out facts. And that's what this YouTube channel is all about. We want to give you a, the good facts. So Purple Martins like wide open spaces. Uh, one of the things that happens, people put up a Martin house in a wide open space and they let the trees grow up. And then the Martins leave and they don't understand why they left. But they like those wide open flight paths into their boxes. So make sure you got good wide open spaces. But we're going to go back to the male purple martin. A beautiful, all dark, purplish, uh, black color. Uh, but that very, very short bill. They When they open their mouth, uh, it's almost like they open their whole face whenever they're flying and scoop up insects in there. And then, you know, when we talk about mosquitoes, somebody once uh, made the analogy that, okay, am I when you're in the buffet line, are you going to pick up you know, 27 little grains of, of rice or uh, tiny pieces, or are you going to grab one big chicken leg? And that's, you know, versus a, a dragonfly versus a little tiny mosquito, it makes sense they would go for the bigger prey there too. So, uh, and then here is a female purple martin. Uh, they, uh, they not as attractive as the male, but of course, you know, that, that sexual dimorphism where females uh, can't be as showy and as bright and uh, they have to camouflage the eggs and things like that. So this is um, a, a female purple martin. And the, these pictures start out with these pictures of these gourds because another question that gets brought up from time to time is I've heard that starlings won't nest in gourds. Well, I wish that were true. Uh, starlings are major, major nest competitors for uh, purple martins. The two inch diameter hole of a purple martin house is perfect for starlings to fit in. And so in a lot of areas, they uh, it, people put up martin houses and the the, the starlings attack and they run the martins off and they outcompete them. Uh, but they have those uh, those round two inch holes. And it, 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 in past, a lot of people where this where this belief came from was when people would put up gourds and houses, then the mar the uh, starlings would definitely uh, go for the houses first because they they like the they're not swaying in the wind like gourds do um, and they they like they prefer them they tend to just prefer the the houses over them but boy if you only put up gourds starlings will attack them so how do we defeat the starlings and, and we've come up with a lot of things over the years uh, one of the one of the main things of course are the different size uh, shaped openings to the gourds and to the houses. Uh, first is the half moon crescent shape. And this is a modified version of that. They call this the M or the modified door opening uh, because starlings were starting to figure out the crescent shape for some people. And so they they came up with this uh, kind of design so the, the martins can uh, scooch in and hold their wings out and they can get through this door. And it's now it's important with, whenever you're talking about a gourd especially uh, is that hopefully it has porches on the inside and the outside. So it's easier for the, the adults and the babies to navigate in a situation. And you may ask, what are these, these silver uh, bars on here? The number one predator on Purple Martins are great horned owls. Great horned owls are horrific on uh, Martins. They land on the boxes or the gourds at night and reach in, grab them and pull them out. Uh, and these are our anti-owl bars on here on this gourd and help keeps the owls from being able to negotiate it. Now, the way they've negated the, the great horned owls in the box world um, it is you see the crescent shaped doors on, on this house, but they, the way they get around the owls here is they're making the compartments deeper. 
The old traditional uh, Martin House boxes are about a four by four inch compartment. Owls can reach in there and grab the babies, grab the adults, and, and, and they uh, can kill them. Whereas these are 11 inch deep compartments. And, and wherever you see the door on this box, they, they Martins go in there and they make a right turn or a left turn, depending upon the box where its floor is on. And they go through another compartment and they lay their eggs way back at the back and that 11 inch deep and the, and the owls can't reach around. They can't get in there. Raccoons can't reach around. Um, and so the, uh, the babies are, are safer back there. And not to mention, here's a quick picture of the nest with the eggs in the very back of that compartment. This is the same box. A friend of my customer at the store took these pictures several years ago. Uh, and this, those are the eggs and the showing those cut green leaves and grass that the Martins. And, of course, they use mud in the bottom as well uh, inside their, their houses. And then I was going to show you this. This is a good example of the, how you show you how that 11-inch deep compartment works. They, the door is on one side, and then they uh, go back and lay their eggs in the back. But as the babies grow and they get older and they larger, they expand in these 11 inch deep compartments, they have more room to spread out and they're not so packed in. So what we find in these sweet boxes are that they lay more eggs, hatch more babies and raise and fledge more young. So uh, people think, well, the 11 inch compartment, I can't have as many nests. Well, believe me, uh, uh, male Martins don't want to nest right beside uh, another male Martin if they don't have to. So these sweet boxes really work they give those males the privacy they want, the distance from another male, uh, but also they have more success with the number of babies and things that they can have in there. And it's, it's a it's a win win for them. Um, another room, rumor I've heard many times is that well, metal houses are just too hot. Um, that is not true at all. Uh, they, they, these are aluminum houses. And they have the reflective roofs on them. They have an attic space, if you will, in there, or the hot air can get trapped. They have proper ventilation. You can see the, the cuts in, uh, on the front where air can ventilate through there. And there's holes up in the door tops of the doors where air can ventilate. So the, the white alumina the, and, and the aluminum color both reflect a lot of the sun's energy and they have to be in wide open spaces that are going to get out in the open. And even some of the companies actually put insulation in the roofs of their houses inside uh, to help protect them even more from the, the heat from the sun and everything. So, but aluminum boxes are by far a better option. They're cooler than plastic, they're cooler than wood. So the, the cast aluminum are definitely the better boxes to go with. Now, with them coming in, you know, we have uh, it, it, Purple Martin. I'll put a link in the description below, but we have the scout maps that are coming in and showing where the birds are arriving. Like I said, all across the southern U.S., uh, they're starting to arrive there. Well, one of the rumors is I have to have my box up by the time the scouts get here. And that is, again, not at all true. Uh, that Remember, those scouts are those older adults, and they're getting in here early. And harsh weather can hurt, hit and hurt those birds and, and all. But, but if you haven't gotten your martin house up or you want to put an additional martin house up this year, you don't have to have it up by the time the scouts get back because the – Martins will continue to arrive all the way through. Uh, one year, uh, John and I put up a, uh, a Martin house on June 1st uh, in here in the Kansas City area, and we had a nest in it on June 2nd. They, they were And they were sub-adults. They were the younger birds, and those birds are yet to even start making landfall really here in the, uh, uh, the lower states yet. So they're a long time before they get up here. So you can put out uh, a Martin house um, anytime in the next couple, three months, and you'll probably have a chance to get Martins. Now, first year landlords, meaning those people who put up boxes for the first time this year, quite often have either very limited luck the first year or no luck the first year. It's not abnormal. I don't want you to think you're going to put these things up and magically Martins are going to be uh, in your box. Now they can, but there's no guarantee of that. They are wonderful animals. They absolutely are entertaining, the, the, the chatter they make and the flying around, and uh, people love them. They're very social animals. And it's been proven that 
Um, the, uh, Martin houses that are win, within 100 feet of a human dwelling actually have more success than ones further out than that. And part of that, of course, is that they, they probably are better maintained and the, the house sparrows are continually kept out of there. The starlings are kept out of there. Um, you, you, I, no matter what you do, if you've got an old box that has three doors in it and you've got Martins in one end and Martins in the other end, but the, the, the middle compartment, uh, don't let the house sparrows even nest in that. Martins do not mind you lowering their boxes and cleaning out the, those sparrows' nests and putting it back up because... Uh, they they don't like that. They spend more time paying attention to that, that house sparrow that's in the middle box rather than taking care of their own. So don't let the sparrows nest in your Martin house. Big, big, important message. Uh, we know that the sparrows are the, and the starlings are the enemies. So they, now, how do you help attract them? Last couple of slides here. I've got uh, our, uh, one of a decoy. Yes, it may sound silly, but these Martin decoys are just a little plastic um, the, the size and shape of a purple martin that clip on to a rod or to a porch of your martin house. And I have seen martins land on them, on these um, perches beside them, sit down and act like they're talking to them. I mean, they're social birds and they get, there's a martin house, they're, they're, they, they're going to maybe better chance of them landing on your martin house and checking it out. Uh, so uh, I, mo we sell a lot of martin decoys, that's for sure, to get when people are just getting started. Once you've got a colony, then they're not as important. And another thing you can try are the dawn song tapes. And this is that chatter that you hear in the morning when those, the martins are flying around. And they're constantly out searching and for other colonies and, and other potential places, other food places. And if you, for people who have never attracted them, uh, they usually little, they put your little speaker out the window in the mornings and play these dawn song tapes, and it can attract those martins that are flying around freely, and they maybe get them to land on your box and, and check it out. So those are two very commonly uh, used practices to try to get martins in for the first time. The Purple Martin, one of America's favorite songbirds, especially one of America's favorite nesting songbirds. So... It's so always a great topic, and in the springtime, like I said, for here, the average return take date for Kansas City is about March 10th, um, but then they start pouring in after that. When we Every time we get south wind, the martins start coming in. So we've got a lot of very dedicated landlords. Uh, we've got some other videos out there about helping them through really cold stretches in the spring when they arrive. Uh, you might want to check out, but if you're thinking about getting into purple martins, uh, I recommend it if your habitat is good and you're willing to put in a little extra work because these are, you know, you do have to maintain these boxes and keep those sparrows cleaned out and the starlings at bay uh, and get those martins to get, can take over and, and get control of your, your nesting structure. You want to do that. So they'll reward you because they're just fantastic birds. So thank you guys for tuning in. Uh, give us a like, give us a share, send in ideas for future programs. Until then, come by and let's talk birds.